Hey guys, what is up? Good evening. And in this video, I'm a answering a question. I actually had a, a very good question that was asked by one of my viewers. And it actually got me thinking. Um, but they seem to, I guess, they were kind of reading the, the writing on the wall. A couple days ago, I made a video about whether or not C-sharp was dying. And I cited a lot of examples like the TOB index and um, you know the amount of jobs, like the job trends on Indeed.com and... Um, things like GitHub and how many projects are being built with Python and a lot of different factors that would, would indicate that Python is emerging as a, a contender to the C-sharp language. And the question was uh, one, from one of the viewers, and he says, knowing that you have a, a day job in C-sharp, which means I work for a, a .NET C-sharp company, these insights give you that much more credibility. Very good, deeply thought out video. Um, he said, with that said, have you considered switching jobs from C-sharp to Java or Python? If not, why not? I remember you you're talking about your job and saying how you like it and all that stuff. And he says, so what's your gut telling you? It sounds like you're priming to switch away from C Sharp. So I'm going to answer that, that question. Um, and number one, switching jobs from C Sharp to Python, um, as far as what is my gut telling me, uh, I, I find that uh, a bit concerning, actually. Of all the reasons why I mentioned Python is a great language and, and all these you know things that it has going for it, it is actually it, it's very good, right? But C sharp is um, is a little bit more modern. It has a lot a lot more commercial tools built around it that make really really complex jobs um, a bit easier to deal with. Um, now, granted, there's editors out there like uh, integrated development environments for Python, like PyCharm, that has uh, tools that it was built by the guys that did uh, ReSharper, which is C Sharps. Basically, it's the JetBrains company, and they build all these cool little tools where you can click a, a click of a button shows you how to rewrite your code in a you know particular way. I've seen the way that that PyCharm works, and I can tell you that when you have Visual Studio and ReSharper running together, I find that product to be a little bit more sophisticated. Uh, making it a lot easier, in my opinion, to be able to really com to deal with a very, very complex code base. Um, so as far as what is my gut telling me about whether or not C Sharp or Python is more secure, I mean, it really depends on your area. But in the United States, with the amount of Fortune you know, 100s and Fortune 500s that are using .NET and C Sharp or Microsoft in some way, shape, or form, a lot of companies still use C Sharp. So where we're seeing a lot of you know the the success that Python has had is we're seeing it in a lot of startups. We're also seeing Python succeed in things like bioinformatics and, and uh, machine learning and things like that. From what I've seen of those jobs, it almost seems like the companies that are hiring for those positions, they're looking for people with advanced STEM degrees, you know, advanced uh, mathematics and uh, you know, physics and things like that. It, it seems like there's there's a lot of that being asked for. So from a Python perspective of where I'm at in my career, those types of jobs wouldn't really appeal to me. So the, the question is, are a lot of corporations running their entire stack in Python? And I really don't think that, that it's anywhere close to the amount of, uh, of companies that are actually running a Java or .NET stack. So my gut tells me it would be a terrible decision for me to move away from C Sharp and try to take a job where I'm doing just Python development. There's absolutely nothing wrong with Python, but a lot of what the Python jobs that I've seen, like I said, if it's not advanced STEM degrees and things like that, I've seen a lot of startups. Now, a lot of people would love to work for a startup. A startup is like their ideal spot. A startup sometimes gets your foot in the door of the industry, and it's easier to get into a startup than it would, you know, especially if you're self-taught, than it would be, you know, trying to break into like a commercial enterprise development gig using Java or C Sharp. Um, so, in that regard, I think Python is great for newbie developers. I think it's great trends that we're seeing it spring up. But the question is geared to, to, towards me, you know, personally about whether or not I would want to upend my career and leave a steady gig as a C-sharp developer in a very corporate environment and then, you know, try to go to an all-Python environment. 
Um, so I have no desire to work 16 or 18 hour days in some startup unless it was my own startup or maybe I'm getting paid a lot more money than, you know, if there's a if, money helps everything. Right. So if there if there was enough money thrown at any sort of thing, I would be enti- enticed to, to join up and, and do that kind of stuff because I, I work my butt off anyway. I mean, if I'm not working on this YouTube channel, I'm always working on something. I'm always trying to better my skills and things like that. So it's not like I don't work those crazy type of hours because I kind of do, but I also do on my own terms. I'm not, I'm not working 16 hours trying to build somebody else's vision so that they can get a big, huge cash payout when the the IPO happens. And then I get, you know, $30,000 in stock, you know, after I've poured in years of my life, you know, that, that kind of thing doesn't interest me as much, but if you're just getting started, there's going to be more opportunities for some of those hot startups. And probably, in my opinion, I would think it would be easier to try to break break in the industry using something like Python as opposed to C Sharp or Java. Now, another thing, too, is that, um, you know, w- with these these corporate gigs, I mean, they're, they tend they tend to be you know steady employment right I mean if if you have kids you have a wife and and a mortgage then you know a steady employment a steady company is is ultimately you know what you're looking for so how many of these shops are not startups that are using a full Python stack at least in the United States and from what I've seen it seems like there's um, quite a bit of Python stuff going on in Europe and the UK and things like that um, but. I'm just not 100% sure how many how many companies are truly using Python as like a primary stack of choice for for you know a lot of their their corporate like if you have a development environment of several hundred developers or even thousands of developers how many companies have thousands of developers and they're like a fully python shop besides consultants like if you're a consultant company like Accenture um or one of those other major contracting consulting companies, then they're going to have thousands of employees, right? And there's going to be probably thousands dedicated to Python and trying to, you know, help customers with their Python stacks and stuff like that. But so the the bottom line is this, though, is that Python is showing some really good trends. It's been around a lot longer than C Sharp. It was never taken seriously for the longest time. People used to say, oh, it's, you know, it's like Perl, but slower and makes you do forced indentation and stuff like that and you know and and it always took a back seat to pearl through the 90s and into the early 2000s and it wasn't until like really django came along or about 2004 that python really started exploding and a lot of that had to do with the the success that google had and you know since that time we've seen python get adopted by a lot of different corporations ibm was using it pretty extensively now Every single library out there that has a public API is going to have Python instructions on how to to interface to it. You know, if it's something like Stripe or a- anything you you name of, uh, Python is is right there. So, I think Python is a great language, but my gut tells me it's probably not a good idea to to try to actively seek out a different career than than C Sharp, because I mean C Sharp ha- is it, it, it's a very stable language, and it's used by a lot of stable companies that employ quite a bit of people in the United States. Beyond that, even all the things that I mentioned where C Sharp is not able to compete very well because you know it's not embraced by the young hackers and it's a lot of nine to five developers that are just you know doing you know their jobs you know and then going home and not really coding or worrying about you know trying to to build the next thing. Um, the the thing is, is that the amount of cash that, that Microsoft has is a tremendous amount of cash. I mean, I, I talked the other day about how Microsoft, Apple, and Google have a tremendous amount of corporate cash. So even where Microsoft is not able to compete very well, they almost have so much cash that they can just force their way to be a competitor, even in things that they're inferior at. So C-sharp developers are pretty safe and 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 the fact that you know even with Microsoft you know seeing the writing on the wall as far as them losing market share in so many different areas you know that they're trying to open source that their their entire stack and they're working on the .net core and and granted it, it's you know it's partly a pile of shit at the moment and and partly it's you know it's basically half working because it just got released but 
um, they are going to make it better as we go along, and that's going to continue to you know, stabilize the C-sharp development environment. They just bought Xamarin for probably over a billion dollars. I'm not sure that the details of that, that sale were ever released, but it was definitely a humongous purchase. Uh, Microsoft's obviously pretty well aligned with like companies like Facebook and um, and they're going to and then now, you know, since Microsoft just recently bought LinkedIn, oh, my God, what is that going to do now? You know, so it's like, you know, Microsoft's going to get into this corporate world, the Azure um, stack, even though they only have about 10 percent of the cloud market, they're still um, they're still growing quite a bit in that area and they're making a lot of money there. So you're going to continue to see a lot of cloud demand as a C sharp developer. Uh, who knows where this Indeed.com stuff is going to you know, go? Uh, but they obviously they bought Skype, um, and then with the uh, Indeed.com trans or not Indeed? Did I say Indeed? I meant LinkedIn. I hope I didn't say Indeed several times. I meant LinkedIn. Um, so e with the LinkedIn purchase, though, it's interesting because LinkedIn, even though they weren't really making any money most of the time. They went out and purchased Lynda.com, the learning e-learning platform, for over a billion dollars. So now Microsoft owns Lynda.com, um, and they'll probably be able to compete with Pluralsight now since you know they they have all that cash. So when you have eighty billion dollars in cash that you can pretty much do whatever you want with, and you make about an additional twenty-two billion dollars in profit every year, there's all kinds of stuff that you can do to stay relevant. Um, one of the biggest fears that Google had when they were first, you know, dis when they were first understanding how valuable their product was in the late 90s, Eric Schmidt, um, the CEO who goes by the title Mr. Google, who's a billionaire now thanks to the Google guys, but he gets brought in as an executive who can run the company because he has, you know, real-world experience where you have a lot of shitheads who are just starting their company that don't really understand how to actually run a corporate company. Um, so one of the first things they usually do, they go out and they get an actual person that can help them run the company. Zuckerberg went out and got Sheryl Sandberg. Um, the Google guys got Eric Schmidt. And Eric Schmidt at one point had, had sat on the, like, the Apple board of directors and things like that. But the point is they go out and they get CEOs that know how to manage the company. But Eric, Eric Schmidt, one of the first things he told the Google, Google guys, he said, you need to watch out for Microsoft because they knew that if – you know, at that point, they were vulnerable. They were vulnerable to Microsoft was even more powerful back then, and they're still quite a, you know quite powerful now. But um, the thing is, is, is Microsoft. Um, you know, people love to hate them, but they've been relevant now for decades. You know, near what three decades now, and um, and they're not going anywhere anytime soon. They're not IBM. They're not like fading quickly. Uh, even IBM has a tremendous amount of wealth that they can turn their, their ship around, but it's going to be a lot more difficult for them than a company like Microsoft. But that's another story. So, yeah, do I want to switch from uh, Python to C Sharp? No, not really. Um, if there was a, a job opportunity and enough money, yeah, of course. But, uh, you know, money talks and bullshit walks, right? So um, would I just want to switch just for the sake of switching? No. I mean, there, there's no reason to do that. You can be a Python and a C Sharp developer. There's nothing wrong with doing both. And um, as far as my own personal ventures, like when I'm building websites and stuff like that, I'm Python 100% just because it's, it saves me a lot of time and effort. Um, it's easier to develop in Django than it is ASP.NET. It's cheaper to host. It's a pleasure to work with as opposed to a pain in the ass. Um, so many reasons to use Python over C Sharp, but I think it's good to know both of them. C Sharp is a more powerful language. When it comes to having hundreds of developers working on very complex software at the same time, C Sharp is a much better language. It's better suited for that type of stuff. So that's just my opinion, guys. Let me know what you think. And please subscribe. Please uh, vote up the video if you would. I appreciate it. And take care. Have a good day. Bye.